Their steady determination and a little help from Western weaponry have got them this far. Mark tells us we have to move. Well, that patch on the soldier's arm is the symbol of Nazi Germany's SS division known as Death's Head. The division was formed of concentration camp guards at the start of the Second World War, and it was known for the mass murder of war prisoners, including 97 British soldiers captured, captured in France in 1940. No mention of any of this was made during the interview. And contrast that with the past. Back in 2014, the BBC reported on the role of neo-Nazis in the conflict in Ukraine. And in 2012, the channel made a documentary over racism and anti-Semitism in Ukrainian as well as Polish football stadiums. There, that came ahead of the Euro Championship held in the two countries and showed neo-Nazi gestures being made at Ukrainian stadiums. Editor of The Grey Zone, Max Blumenthal, says it's important to report on the issue of extremism in the conflict, especially as the West is giving its weapons to Ukraine. As I just revealed at The Grey Zone, the BBC correspondent and fixer who is shaping that network's coverage of the events around Mariupol is actually a Ukrainian nationalist public relations operative who was involved in creating a viral app that is being called by the Washington Post one of the uh, top Ukrainian information weapons. And so I'm not surprised with the whitewashing. It is unfortunate, though, that Western audiences are deprived of important context on Ukrainian politics and what brought the situation to this point. Ukraine is one of the only countries in the world that has an officially neo-Nazi unit with Nazi-inspired insignia incorporated into its National Guard, whose civilian wing, the National Corps, has operated under the auspices officially of the Interior Ministry. When arms are pouring in, and we are seeing British-made light anti-tank weapons in the hands of fascist right sector battalions and the Azov Battalion, we should be concerned about what will happen with these weapons after the war, what they will do, and whether they will carry out their plans for a civil war or a wider conflict beyond Ukraine. And that's why it's important, as well as the fact that they helped inspire this conflict and accelerate the push to war with their actions in eastern Ukraine around the Donbass, consistently attacking civilians and violating agreements.